Hey everybody, welcome to the Uwe Chronicles, and tonight we're going to feature Margaret P. Bean. So, uh, just so you guys know, um, I'm the author of Blood and Whiskey series. Um, my name is D.B. Bray, everything's available on Amazon, and you're welcome to uh, come on the show. This is a free platform for all creatives who enjoy what they do. So, we're going to add Margaret right now, and we're going to get... Oh, I'm here. <laughs> I was hoping it was going to work, girl, because I've been having trouble. I said, oh, no, not again. Well, this is my first time ever doing it. So um, Kendra was so kind to tell me how to actually get on. So here I am. It's a, um, an honor and a privilege to be here. How are you today? Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm rebuilding the house to sell on Sunday. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm wore out. But thank okay. You for asking Margaret. I All right. That, okay. So. You're actually over there doing what? Demolition and rebuilding, or what are you doing? Uh, all that's done. Now I'm painting everything that's been torn out and put back together. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's one of those days. Um, okay. But I appreciate you working with us to get rescheduled and everything that's been going on. So, um, yeah, it's been. Uh, well, this is the, this is my day. I didn't have to oh, reschedule. This oh, is okay, actually great. my day. Yeah. Oh, well, I, See, I, you are tired. <laughs> yeah, well, been rescheduled, so it's no, good. I'm good. This is my day. We never changed it. Excellent. So, okay. Excellent. Well, I wish you well with that project, and that the house will sell right away. Um, you know, houses are still selling during this market. Yeah, I'm just you know got a whole bunch of masks and uh, uh, antibacterial stuff that when you come in the house you're. You're not coming in without doing that. Um, oh, my God. I have the hand sanitizer wipes tissues at the door, and I have all of my mask hanging on the door. And I actually am looking for PPE items, um, work for the University of Maryland, trying to get the students back on campus safe. And I don't want to hear nothing about another mask if I don't have to. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. You know? It's our new normal, so we just have to deal with it. But to find them is being a big challenge. But walk right into Target. They had some really nice ones for $4. And so um, if you need some, Target has them. Great. Yeah, I've been there today. Bought a bought new bookshelves for the one that collapsed last night during the live. Um, I saw that. Like, it books everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my wife is rebuilding bookshelves right now to uh, put back up. So I'm okay. Glad. I'm glad it didn't happen. Uh, you know, glad everybody was okay, but it was an uh, interesting day. Very well, interesting. did it did it um, appear to that it was going to fall before it did, or it just all of a sudden you heard this big crash? I heard her scream. That's why. I got oh my! He said he heard her scream. <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. That was fun. Okay. So um, just for everybody tuning in. Um, let's go through some of your accolades. There are a lot of them. Um, so we're just going to touch on them and then let you expand on them if that's good. Okay. You. Okay. Uh, so we have, um, the sister code, uh, that was a stage play. You just All right, that. Yolanda, what's up? <laughs> uh, so the sister code, uh, the stage play that was, um, that was in May that you did that. Well, we had postponed it because of the pandemic. We rehearsed oh. all the way up to it and we had to postpone it. Okay, so that was in there, yeah. but, but you're gonna you're gonna put that back out. Yeah, I'm gonna put it back out. Yep. Okay. Um, you have a um, a couple of uh, books that we're gonna touch on, but uh, okay, okay. Seeking God's wisdom is okay. One of them. Uh, uh -huh. Raising the standard. Um, and that's uh, all. That's all. Well, yeah. Seeking God's wisdom is uh, my journal for women. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Raising the Standard is a relationship book with you and God. So, mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Walk with the Lord, that was also... That's Raising the Standard. That's the same one. Raising okay. the Standard and Your Walk with the Lord. That's the same book. That's the same book. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, and you had a recent COPA uh, magazine article? Yes, I did with Rodney Branch. That was an excellent interview. I totally enjoyed it. And um, it actually is still online right now because it's an online publication. Awesome. 
Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and can people hit you up in DM about where to find all of your information? Uh, all they, they, they sure can. Um, but, you know, I use my name, Margaret P. Bean, so people can just contact me. They can Google me and my name will come up. Um, but I actually have a web page. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, and I'm on Twitter as well. So, and it's all Margaret P. Bean, and it just comes up. But I have a web page with everything, bio, how to get in touch with me. Um, I also do motivational speaking and so all of that information on how to book me is on there. Um, I am a founder of a nonprofit called Strength and Our Sister, um, and I want to encourage, build, and strengthen women to do and be all that they can be um, in this arena that they um, have dreams and visions, and so to help them get their dreams and visions started, you know? Excellent. Excellent. Yep. Admirable. Um, you went to Adelphi? Delphi University, I attended um, paralegal program because all of these books, I don't know where they came from. I'm supposed to be a lawyer in a prestigious law firm at that. And so God has his own plans for my life. And so uh, plays and books, I didn't ever think I would be doing any of this, but I'm grateful for the opportunity. And, and you dropped out of school at 16. And yep, I dropped out of high school at 16, and I left home at 16, um, and <laughs> I just was out there. And one of my friends, um, she was actually my sister's friend, she let me stay with her. And um, I was trying to find myself and get myself together and um, just left home, dropped out of high school. And um, I'm grateful to God for keeping me because it was kind of rough, but he kept me. Hmm? Uh, you have an AA from Strayer and a BA from Strayer. Yeah, I did. Um, I didn't do that until late in life, probably in my 30s. Um, I had, after I dropped out of high school, I did go back and get my GED at 18 because by then I had a daughter and um, I wanted to show her that I could accomplish and finish some things. And then I ended up having three daughters. And then by the time the fourth daughter came in my 30s, I was finally able to go back to school because here in uh, DMV, because I'm actually from New York, um, I wanted to grow in my career. So um, I was an admin and my supervisor said you can go here if you get this degree so when I went to Strayer they said oh if you can get here you can get here and I said well let me accomplish the associates and feel like I've done something so I did that and then I went back two years later and got my bachelor's degree and it really helped me with my career um, to go higher and higher so right now I'm a supervisor at University of Maryland and I'm still looking to grow in my career so and you're a pastor I am now on um, retirement. Um, You're in retirement. Now. I'm in retirement. I'm in retirement. Um, 2004, we started a ministry and we um, did Bible study. And then um, we went to a bishop and he ordained us and licensed us as ministers and pastors. And the us is my ex-husband. I am divorced. And um, we had a ministry from 2004 to 2012. And so I was actually pastoring the church. And um, I'm actually a PK. A PK is a preacher's kid. And so um, I've known church all my life. And so so um, there was only so much that I was going to do um, growing up, but that's a part of who I am. And so if somebody calls me to speak, I'll go. I used to have a circle of pastor or friends that I preach at their services all the time. And after the divorce, I just kind of like life happened and discovering who Margaret is. And so the writing part of it is a, a blessing as well. Yeah. Right. Um, my young adult novel is narrated by a pastor. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I have another book called Pastor's Pain. Uh, let's just kiss and say goodbye. Uh, when people leave the church, they get mad because another parishioner made them mad and they never say goodbye to the pastor. So at least come by and kiss me and say goodbye. Right, right. <laughs> so you have a ton of accomplishments. Um, let's, let's start with your writing style. Um, do, you, do you plot or outline or do you just write when you touch the keyboard? I just write when I wake up in the middle of the night with a, a trusty pen and then I have these ideas in my head so I have my phone and I'm talking into my phone and um, then I have these dry spells man you know you have those dry spells like I can't think of anything and then sometimes you're just constantly writing a lot of stuff um, and 
I tried different things. Um, the raising a standard in your walk with the Lord, that's spiritual. And then the Madison St. Clair, it's not a pseudonym. Um, when I got divorced, I found out who I was. And Madison is just like this fat chica, like, yes. And she writes poems and um, short stories. And so no pseudonym. I, I, I'm doing a series, the Madison St. Clair series. And I, I call the first one Madison St. Clair Turning Points. And then I put Margaret P. Bean on the bottom. So it's not a pseudonym them thing but the Madison side of me does the poems and the short stories and she's the writer awesome, awesome. yeah um, you know in, in in your opinion do you like the digital or the paperback I like the paperback I did uh, publishing this last book that I did myself and to create it in the Kindle um, the lining it up and formatting was awful so I'll take a paperback because I can write in it and I can actually hold it in my hand I can pick it up and put it down when I want to right uh, we of course know each other from mother magazine Yes, Angela Joy Clemens is a sweetheart. I did a workshop last year called Boss Woman Making Power Moves. And Angela is that unsung hero that she can do graphics, she can do videos, she created this online magazine and um, she's doing film and she is amazing. So I had her be one of the speakers and we had women come who have their own dreams and desires. And I wanted her and it was four other women um, that were already in the business of doing film, um, online magazines, uh, promoters, to give these women a jump start in their life with their own dreams. And she was phenomenal. Um, she writes books every day and she actually publishes them herself. And so she's been a great resource um, and she supports everything that I do. We actually um, met at a um, U Style magazine did a, a call to the table for theater and for um, um, film and so her and I came and um, I had my theater piece and there were some other people there and um, our biggest thing that we walked away with is that we don't support each other and when I left there with her name and her number everything that I do she supports everything I she does I support and so we um, kill that myth that we don't support each other she uh, she is the designer of the Ooh Wee logo. Awesome! Ooh Wee, Ooh Wee. I was wondering if we were gonna do Ooh Wee. Ooh Wee. <laughs> oh, and and I was like, uh, Kendra sent me the draft, and it didn't have my P, and I was kind of feeling like, oh my, that's my signature. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that. I apologize. No, she did. Uh, she oh, fixed she, it. I she love her. It. She's uh, amazing. She's amazing. You have an amazing assistant. Yeah. Totally yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. She, she's more of a, a publicist than an assistant now. She does a lot of the negotiating of the the sponsorship contracts. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Oh, yeah, she, she's she's in there. Uh, okay, awesome. I, I love her to death. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, she, she's a great social media manager. Uh, if anybody is needing one, KB Square Media is unbelievable. KB Square Media, I second that. She's yeah. amazing. She just left me a message. She said, I'm not going to be able to get on, but I want you to breathe, exhale, and you're going to do fine. So yeah. she's amazing right up until the show start. Yep. Yep. Yeah, she is. She is. She, she's she's great in my pocket. I'll tell you what. <laughs> if I didn't have her, uh, the show would probably not be going on right now. Well, we're as good as our admin people. I actually. Um, uh, contacted my admin today because of this new adventure that I'm doing. She helped me with my TV show because I actually have a TV show, Real Talk with Margaret P. And I did a pilot season um, at the end of the year. And um, it takes a lot of work. You know, I reach out to the guest and I get them to come on the show. And then she does all the waivers on the back end and she contacts them like where to come. And she's just amazing. And I wouldn't be able to do half the things without her. So um, my big announcement, um, she She's going to be a part of that. I'm praying. I haven't heard back from her yet, but you're just as good as your admin, I tell you. Yeah, that's, you know, and that's business. Um, you know, this this started 40 days ago. This mm -hmm. is live. This has not been on very long, and it's already grown by like 350 supporters. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, amazing. And, and Kendra's big, big on that. Uh, Val uh, King from Brown Sugar Reads has been huge in my corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and that's why we do what we do. That's the, the best part. Um, mm -hmm. 
So talk to me about the Copa Magazine article that people can, can tune into. Uh, there's a link in your bio, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but but let's talk about what that's about. So let's throw some interest up on that. Um, Rodney Branch does a online magazine. Um, he also does a paper publication, but it's more popular online. And um, I met him at a networking event. And after that, he wanted to interview me because of my books and the plays. And um, so we did a lot of phone calls and um, he actually got the information that he needed. And it was around the time when I was doing my um, boss woman make power move so it was also um, an opportunity to advertise my flyer and promote the women and what they were doing as well because when you go and pull the article up um, you'll see the flyer from last year's um, workshop that I did and the women that were a part of it but it just talks about me growing up in New York it talks about me um, having dyslexia and transposing numbers it talks about uh, my books and how I got here um, my family dynamics and so um, it's a good article and I was grateful for the opportunity um, I've met some really good people in this arena and I've had some really good um, promotional opportunities on different um, networks and channels um, I just recently did a interview with Barry Austin from six and one entertainment very dear friend he's in a cast of um, the Game Changer stage play that I wrote. He's also a cast member of the Sister Code stage play that I wrote. And so it was a privilege to be on his show, um, Six and One Entertainment. Um, he's doing it weekly on Wednesdays and um, you do a pre-recording. He doesn't go live with you. He does a pre-recording and he's had some phenomenal people. And so I wish uh, Six and One Entertainment like the best in everything that they do. Um, Yolanda, Sister Code, um, the Sister Code stage play was developed from a book that she wrote. She's an award-winning um, author. She wrote a book called Sister Code and then um, her and I met and um, I took Sister Code and changed it into a Sister Code. There's rules to this thing to play. So um, Yolanda Brathwaite, she is a phenomenal marketer. She's an award-winning author. Um, she is my producer of my last play and so looking forward to greater things with her as well. Um. Awesome. I mean, it, it's awesome. And are you from Queens originally? Or? No, I'm from Hempstead, Long Island. Shout out to my Tigers. Right. <laughs> yes, Hempstead, Long Island. Um, never lived in Queens. My sister actually lives in Queens. But um, no, I um, left New York like 30 years ago now. So if you don't hear my New York talk, <laughs> it's because it's watered down with this DMV country accent. <laughs> yeah, uh, I noticed yeah. that. Uh, so the, um, um, have you have you ever been to the Harlem Book Fair? No, I never have. You this said, go. I gotta go. Let me write that down. Harlem yeah. Book Fair. Yeah, they have it yearly. Uh huh. Well, with COVID, you don't know if that's going to continue. It probably won't happen this year, but you know. Yeah, you've got. Uh, it, it's usually it takes place in July. Uh, I did it last year with Kawan, and mm -hmm. it was 120 degrees out there. Oh my goodness! It's, and and they said the next couple of weeks is going to be super hot as well. I had my air on all day, and I went out and took the trash out. I was like, oh my god, let me get back inside. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. my wife kind of gave me that look earlier. Uh, you know, time to brave the heat and throw the trash out. Yeah, uh, yeah. Know, and uh, um, you know, um, I'm tired. You can you can see it in my face. I have. To, I can I, see. I, I, I can I, see. I, I've not slept in three days. Wow. <laughs> So okay. I was like, all right, Margaret's coming on. You've been a big supporter for me uh, these, since the beginning of this. Um, okay. Well, I'm excited to be a part of the DB yeah. um, family. Um, you and Kendra have made it a very welcoming experience. And, um, you know, I try to promote people and everything that they're doing. You know, um, no personal gain to support people um, and help them with their visions and their dreams. We're all trying to be better than we were yesterday. And so my motto is always to encourage, inspire, and build up people and strengthen them, you know, and help them to be the best that they can be, you know. So, um, and, yeah, so. and how is Maryland with COVID? 
Um, where I am, our numbers are pretty good, but you know, they're trying to masquerade a lot of different things with trying to get the economy built back up. So they're not really talking a lot about numbers, you know, it's just go out with your mask and people are going out without mask on. Please wear your mask. Be considerate of my space, even if you don't want to, you know, but be considerate of my space. It's, um, people are just out and about and we've been in for a long time. I was actually grateful to be in because I was running up and down the road to New York for the show and I was here when I wasn't in New York I was working on a film project um, with a guy named Car Kazar um, filmmaker and um, the Zeke project um, right now is in post-production and um, so we met last Friday the Friday before working on another project so I'm kind of getting back to my grind um, went to the studio and social distancing and did some filming and so I'm um, just really excited about the film aspect because I do have a film that I want to do um, so we'll see how we get back into the new normal of um, filming and you know stage production so literally what I've been doing in here is um, I had several projects I was hired to do um, uh, must be the music it was going to be a stage play and another book that I was going to turn into a play um, when strangers meet so what I'm doing now is I'm flipping literally books plays into books and um, publishing them myself and so uh, my great news is is that I got my first client last night that I am going to publish their book so uh, anybody want their books published I'm doing a full service independent publishing company and um, um, I am in here teaching myself how to do some great things and so uh, my new book I did it myself so I'm excited about it um, it, it was it was it took me a little bit of time to do it but I, I have the end product and so I want to provide a full service um, editing you know copyrights all of that um, so people can get their books out we're home now we're doing a lot of Kindle reading and so it's a good time to get your book out and um, I don't want to charge people phenomenal crazy prices I spent like thirty five hundred dollars just to get one book published and um, yeah yeah it will overpriced and and just really the end product was very nice I got it back when you know they promised to get it back to me but the fees were astronomical and um, so I don't want to rip people off um, I want to get them a really good book and a product in somebody's hand that's going to make a difference in somebody's life because we write with the intent to release what's on the inside of us but when somebody reads it they've been waiting for that you know they're like oh I needed this book rather it's a romance book rather it's a mystery rather it's um, um, the types of books that you write where you have a lot of drama and all of that but somebody needs to read that so um, why make it be difficult or too expensive for them to be able to get what they need so um, full service editing everything I had zoom meeting last night I'm excited about the project they're excited about the project so we're gonna do pre-release August the 1st and we're gonna go live with the book on August the 15th so I want a really tight deadline but um, I'm up for the challenge uh, reach mm -hmm. out to Kendra and we'll do a free promo for that zoom meeting uh, okay we'll cool. go ahead and let our listeners know about what's going on Okay. All right. Well, hopefully I can get my authors on here uh, to get an interview as well. Absolutely. Free pass for you. There, there all right. You. Thank yeah. you so much. No I appreciate problem. that. No Thank you. All, all right. right. So in, in your opinion, do you think, um, do you think that uh, the, the literacy rate right now in this country is going down? Um, Probably so. A lot of people are doing homeschool. Everybody can show their children something or teach them something, but the every day of the new curriculum, the expectation that a parent who sends their child to school and they go off to work um, in a law office, not saying that they can't do it, but at the end of the day, the reading programs that were in school are probably not as effective at home, you know, so most definitely um, the literacy rates are going down because the parents are really not equipped to be the teacher. Teachers not 
not saying that they can't do it, but I'm just saying there's a lot of challenge. I have a teacher friend, um, her name is Regina, and um, they're doing it online. And the hard part for her, or the biggest challenge, is to get the kids who are older to log on. My daughter, Darrell, she's a stickler with her eight-year-old, and so she's home, she's doing her school, and he's doing his school, and she's that parent. She's a PTA mom, you know, so my net, my grandson is still like he's in school, but everybody doesn't have that due diligence. So I would have to say yes, in my opinion, literacy is down. Yeah, um, and, and it's people like you that, that are going to bring it back. Um, well, yeah. thank you very much. I, I really hope so. You know, during this pandemic, we've been home. And so I've been able to read some books that I have not been able to read for a minute. I literally moved into my place a year ago and I still have boxes that are not unpacked because I I did my show um five times in New York, Maryland, D.C., just traveling up and down the road. Then I took on this new project, you know, and um, every weekend I was in New York and one of my friends said, well, why don't you use technology and Zoom the, the because I'm a hands-on director and I want to be there with the people and I want to develop an authentic relationship with them. So I was there, you know, I'd, I'd want to see it from cradle to grave, so to say. Sure, sure. You know, one of the things we're halfway through the interview, but I want to get the 11 rapid fire. Ooh, we. Ooh, we. <laughs> okay, Margaret. what quest what questions you got? What questions you got? I think I'm ready for the challenge. <laughs> Good. Good. Favorite flower. I love tulips. Tulips. Yes. Favorite musician. Now, mine, I, I listen to um, Oh Happy Day before I write uh, every time. Um, Favorite musician. Um, he is a guitar player. He's not known. Um, here in the DMV, they do a lot of live music. And um, so I'm going to give a shout out to my boy, David Tapscott. He is a phenomenal guitarist. And um, he's not well known yet, but... Yeah, favorite guitarist. Mm -hmm. That's 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 how you get known. Get, yeah, get yeah. I just give him that shout out. You know, David Tapscott, guitarist. Anybody need one? Yes. Uh, <laughs> vacation spot. Well, I've gone to Ghana for give back, but the country was beautiful. Um, I actually went to Las Vegas. That was fun. But I would have to go when I went to Cancun all-inclusive like sit in the water go jet skiing I actually went parasailing didn't think I want to do that but I did and so um, I was thinking this year I'm going to be uh, 55 and I was having a black tie affair and I was going back to Cancun really? yeah really what I was gonna yeah go maybe 37 Oh, well, thank you I'm gonna have to use that in the future I, <laughs> together real well Oh, thank you so much. I try really, really hard. That's a bl that's a blessing right there. I have a daughter. I have a daughter that's thirty six. He said thirty seven. Wow. <laughs> threw me for a loop for a minute. I said okay. It threw me for a loop too. Ooh, Ooh wee. <laughs> Ooh wee. <laughs> Favorite car, Margaret. Um. I kind of like SUVs. My last car was a Ford Explorer, and now I'm driving a Buick Infusion. So I like something that's kind of like a, a, a SUV. You can get hit, and you're going to keep going through the light. That's just, you're going <laughs> to... No, because I have to travel with all of these daggone books in the back of my car for the setup of the vendor. And then um, when I'm doing a play, I have all of the props in my car. And I'm really kind of upset because I downgraded in size, the Ford Explorer, I had the six seat, I could get all of the props in there. So, you know, any type of SUV, I'm good. Awesome. Um, I don't know if you watch sports, favorite sport team and sport, if you watch. Um, <laughs> I'm getting ready to crack you up. It's contingent upon who I'm dating at the time. Sure. <laughs> um, I, did I become support it, honey. <laughs> I, I did become a Wizards fan, and, um, you know, I love the Wizards. I will go see a good game, um, but when it comes to football, you know, um, I don't really have a preference, you know, um, so. I don't watch football. I'm a hockey fan. Okay. Favorite food? Um, 
I love salmon. I actually have some taken out for dinner tonight. So I like to make a good grilled teriyaki salmon. Grilled teriyaki salmon? Yes. Can't stand salmon, but my wife loves it. So, okay. Uh, All right. Favorite movie? Oh my gosh. Favorite movie. I like the notebook that was very romantic. He's looking at my face like, mm. I saw it and I wanted to cry during it. I have never seen it again since the big screen. Okay. All right. You know, um, I thought that was good. Um, oh my God. Something dramatic. I really liked did Tyler Perry's acrimony with Tarji P. Henson. She went to the other side of crazy. And I, did, I I knew she could do it, but I didn't know Tyler could actually go there. And he went there with the script. So I really, really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Do you think everybody has a Medea in their family? Of course, of course. <laughs> my style is my wife's cousin, but she says I'm wrong. I, I just don't think so. When, when Medea kind of goes off, that's the... <laughs> Yeah. So, favorite spot to write? Would that be running down the street, jumping jacks, on the couch, in the car, or at work? The magic happens most of the time at work. Um, I'm typing up something else, and then all of a sudden it'll hit me, and I start like split screen and typing. You know, this last couple of months of the pandemic, it happens right here in the dining room at the dining room table. The magic happens. <laughs> My wife said that I'm the female Medea. Okay. Uh, All right. We'll, we'll have a talk about that over dinner. Um, <laughs> so um, if you could climb Mount Everest, what character from any life experience or anywhere would you take with you to climb Mount Everest? What character would I take with me to or climb person. a person? Yep. Um, well, I have no desire to climb it. Neither do I, but it's just... So, it's just a question, a hypothetical question. So, I would take Winnie the Pooh. Juanita Pooh. No, Winnie the Pooh. You'd take Winnie the Pooh. You do right. know our man eating goats on... <laughs> <laughs> I oh, go my with, God. I would go with Grown Girls New York City Incorporated. That's who I'd go with. You would go with Grown Girls New York Incorporated? Yeah, I'd probably take her too because she could probably talk us up the mountain and down the mountain and probably buy it and sell it back to who she bought it from. And Yolanda uh, is an amazing, amazing marketer. So she could probably sell Mount El Everest. To Mount Everest. To Mount Everest. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, um, Batman or Robin? Batman. Have you seen the Joker movie? No, I haven't. I would pass on that one. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty rough. Uh, I, I that was pretty. I, I, now was that his life story and how he got to be where he was and um, was it something about his mother abandoning him or something to that effect? Beat him within an inch of his life and broke his head and open. Yeah, it was, it was graphic, man. I, I've seen. Oh, some I don't really stuff. like that. Mm -mm, sad. Yeah, I, I, I'm not trying to watch that. I'll usually watch, like, Medea Halloween if I need a laugh. Um, Medea's big in this house. We, we watch a lot. Okay. We okay. A lot of Medea. All right. Um, All right. Your thoughts on Tyler Perry starting his career? Um, you know, he is someone that um, I aspire to. Um, I... Um, his story of living in a car and using his credit cards to pay for his first stage play, I get it. It's an investment. I have not made any money from my first stage play and we've traveled and I've put more money into traveling and cast members like 13 or 14 because I didn't know when to cut it off. I had started out with 20 people and um, I, I didn't realize I had to rent mics for all these people and so I cut it down but um, I get it you know he had a thirst and he had a hunger to bring his his passion to life and so he sacrificed great things of um, personal need so I get it I've, I've invested in my show it's an investment um, and it's a passion and so you don't really think about money you made or you didn't make you just think about your message is powerful and you need to get your message to the masses and so um, I truly um, aspire to his beginnings and um, 
looking at him where he is now, um, all of his hard work and dedication, say stick in there, stay determined, believe in your product, believe in your brand, and it will come to pass. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Final question, Jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the return to the ring of pastoring to the masses? Well, in answering that, I feel like um, God has taken and flipped the pulpit where I stood behind the pulpit and the masses came to get the message. And now I am going to the masses to take the message in all of my productions. Um, my first play was um, dealing with healthcare awareness for HIV. And um, the game decided he wanted to get married and he met Shonda Shop a lot. Yes, I do have characters. And um, he met her at a club and they got married and she ended up with HIV. So uh, we do a, this is an interruption of this um, show and we have somebody come out and we give statistics in your area about HIV. We have this new medicine that is um, camouflaging it where it makes it seem like it's not in your system but it's still there and you still can pass it. And my passion behind that is two of my sister-in-laws and my daughter's godmother passed away and in one of my books I wrote a poem dedicated to them and um, so I just want to do that as a, a, a healthcare awareness for women to be mindful that, you know, protect yourself. And in the new production, um, um, I talk about betrayal of sisters and I talk about um, domestic violence um, and um, forgiveness and um so uh, in that message, women, it's okay to tell someone that you're being abused. It's okay to defend yourself. It's okay to speak up. Also, in the betrayal of the friendship, I talk about the mental illness um, that was brought on by a trauma. So that healthcare awareness piece for the new show is dealing with um, mental um Aware, mental health awareness and dealing with domestic violence. Um, and considering now we're in pandemic and people can't get out, I'm sure there's a lot more domestic violence going on right now. So I would have to say that I believe that God has taken me in a different direction where I'm taking the message to the masses through the plays, the books, um, the online interviews. And so I always attribute everything that I do to him. And so to go back to the traditional um, Sunday of um, um, services, it's a lot. It takes a lot of work to get one staff and get people to come to service and you still have to be dedicated and my kids were younger at the time so um i don't know what god is going to do but right now i feel like i'm taking a message to the masses do my plays books and just the public speaking so quick backtrack mm -hmm. would you take mother magazine up to everest I would take Angela with me. Angela is a trooper. I love her. You know, she would videotape the whole experience. <laughs> we would make it a documentary and we would come back and she would have it all online, you know. And, um, you know, one day I went to her house and she was doing this community thing and she had me stand up against the wall and do my little video and, uh, you know, unity in the community. So we'd probably be on Mount Everest videotape and doing a documentary or something. So I would take her with me. I love her. Yes. So we would take Grown Girls New York city and we would take mother magazine yes most definitely mm -hmm. i'm just checking uh, <laughs> i would refuse the answer i would say you know what uh i'm not climbing everest even in a hypothetical uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a guy. Uh, okay you know um so, well, I didn't think I would go parasailing, and I actually did do parasailing, and it was amazing. And uh, we had to get to the boat on a jet ski. And so uh, Sheila Stanton, travel partner, we went together, and she was screaming and hollering. And so I was scared because it was three of us on this jet ski. We made it to the boat, and we get on, and we're going up, 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 up. And it was amazing. And so by the time we came back, the adrenaline was flowing, and we had to take the jet ski back to the um, land and so I was like it's my birthday bitches <laughs> and she was screaming and hollering like oh my god don't put your hands up put your hands down and I was laughing and hollering so I'm I'm daring I'll try it you know I'll, I'm try I'll try anything at least once depends on what it is though but you know so Mount Everest parasailing you know I'll try it so um yes <laughs> that's <the first. laughs> 
It's my birthday, bitches, is the first. Oh, Arthur I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 okay, should it be censored? I'm sorry. Have bleep, seen, bleep. Have you seen my live today? I oh, okay. Well, let me just say, my birthday is July 14th. It's on Tuesday. And so once again, it's my birthday, bitches. Okay. Okay, you know us, Kansas. You know how we do. <laughs> you, have, you have got to... Uh, it, it, I dropped, I think, I stopped counting after 27 F-bombs on the last little lot. That <laughs> so that don't bother this show. Okay. This you know, I'm just excited. You know, I'm grateful to God. In the midst of a pandemic, God is still being good. And I get up every morning and I have life, health, and strength. And my grandmother used to get a testimony at church. And I never understood about, like, 25 people had to get up and say, I I'm grateful for life, health, and strength. And now it has great meaning. Like, oh, I'm grateful for life, health, and strength. Because when I get up, um, I'm still breathing. And I do have strength. I may have some aches and pains but just the idea to just be alive you know it's it's a great thing and so um i pray that i get to see the 14th but uh one of my girlfriends sharon hampton benjamin i gotta give these shout outs she baked me a cake oh my god i gotta show you this cake it is so so amazing. It's like a three layer banana cream cake. And she lives in Pennsylvania. She had her daughter hand deliver my cake yesterday. So the birthday behavior begins. Yes, the shenanigans begin. <laughs> Margaret getting her groove back. Um, uh, he's been getting my groove back. Oh there, my God, I'm there, mad at you, DB, right now. <laughs> you, you, should, you, should, you should create a play on that. There you go. Oh my like goodness. birthday. Oh no, honey, use behind. I've been got my groove. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I still yeah. thought you were 37. So. Well, hold on to that 37. I'm not going to complain that one bit. You did it good. I, not yeah. one bit. Thank somebody, you. Somebody said to me the other day, I look like a mature Eminem, so I shaved my whole beard off. Uh, <laughs> I said, you okay. know. I'm a writer, and that's that's great that there's you know people out there that have a great imagination. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I happen to have met Marshall uh, 20 years ago, uh, so I I know uh, you know Marshall's done enough pills in his time to have killed a whole <laughs> family of 12. Um, okay. So you know I you know I would rather be compared to a, a mature Brad Pitt or okay perhaps, okay perhaps somebody. Uh, like that. But Marshall, you know, and I get that because people think that I write in a predominantly black genre that that I think that, you know, Marshall Mathers mm -hmm. from Eminem or um, J. Deck out of Boston. Okay. Uh, okay. But but yeah, no, I'm no mature Eminem. Uh, I'm not. Okay. A poet. I'm not a poet like you, Mark. Oh, uh, well, you know, that poet thing just came on me. They actually came out of a relationship that I had gotten out of. And then um, I met this guy. He was really cool. We were like cool friends, no relationship thing, just good friends. And um, he reminded me of um, hot apple pie and haagen ice cream. And so the whole poem just came out and it's in the book. Like, <laughs> ain't no lady ever said that about me. But that's, all right. <laughs> that's a smooth dude right there. You're born and comfortable and, and you have this hard crust on the outside and then you put some ice cream on and that's how warm you are begins to melt so he's a cool person cool. and um yeah, I really um, have met some really nice people on my journey, um, men, women, children. Um, I met some really nice people, so I'm grateful for the people that I've met. And um, so I'm grateful to even meet you, DB. Thank yeah. you for having me. I'm excited about being here and just grateful for the opportunities and the doors that open to me. And, and you know, I think that you could be really good just doing lives with a bunch of people. You know, you, have, <laughs> you really do. You have the ability. There's some people that come on the lives that... Uh, it's hard because they're they're severely introverted, right? They're writers, um, and and it you know it can get quiet. Uh, but you well. I consider myself to be an introvert. I, I, I love being around people, but I say that's the gift of God in me, the extrovert. And I realize that we need each other. So I'll go out for a little while and then I'm back home, the introvert piece of me and doing my writing and then go back out. So I'm, 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 
sort of, you know, the introvert that nobody wants to believe I'm an introvert. But as far as like interviews and stuff like that, like I said, I had my own talk show and it was Real Talk with Margaret P. And we were always live on Facebook. Um, I never did pre-recorded shows. Um, so um, they were interesting because you don't get the bloop out the bloopers. <laughs> the bloopers are just live at the yeah. moment, you know. So yeah. when a bookshelf yeah. collapses in the middle of a live. Or... Oh, in the middle of a live, it is what it is, you it know. Is what it is. Yeah. So I came yeah. back on and said, welcome to the ooh-wee. Ooh-wee. Right. <laughs> Everything live with a happy That'd happen here. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, we've talked a lot. Um, you know, and, and in your opinion, the literacy uh, of this country right now, um, you know, what do you think would be the best um, thing to in, uh, get children more interested in, in reading, especially those from disadvantaged backgrounds that uh, don't see a lot of reading uh, in the home? What do you think would be, what books do you think would be helpful for those people as a motivational speaker? Um, I would have to do research and get back to you on that because um, my speaking part has been geared towards women. Mm -hmm. And um, I adopted a shelter here in Maryland, and it was women and children. And um, we didn't go for the educational piece. We went for the basic needs piece, making sure that they had soap and all of those great things that we take for granted every day. Um, and they didn't have those things. And that was my focus. Um, I would have to research and actually get more involved. Um, right now, the Los Angeles Society, young lady named Sadia Colbert, um, very dear to me, a bonus baby in my life. And, um, she has a nonprofit organization for women and children who are teenagers who are homeless. And so um, I'm looking forward to actually speaking with her um, to make some things happen. Um, um, this year for my birthday on Facebook, you're allowed to um, have people make donations to a nonprofit organization. Her organization was enlisted, but on my page, I actually um, linked people to her organization. So looking forward to getting more involved with her on that. Um, um, Yolanda does um, have a good rapport and she gives out um, free bras and personal products to them. So I would have to get back down into the grassroots with the youth. Um, I went to Ghana, took some, you know, supplies over to them. Um, I would say that our American children, they have everything that they need, charter schools with the high end technical pieces, gone to Ghana, the young kids over there, one school had computers, one didn't, there was no air, it was hot they're there all day but they're happy and excited that they're going to be able to graduate and go to college and come to the United States and then take their craft back to home where they live so to, to be able to see the difference in Ghana children and American children uh, we took several American children over we stayed at a hotel and they thought they were going to just be able to plug in and so those little things that we think that we can do you have to have a Absolutely. universal plug yeah. right and then Absolutely. when you leave out right when you leave out of the room you take your key card out and all the power cuts down so they were thinking oh when I get back my game is going to be charged no the power is connected to your key so uh, we I would say we're privileged when it comes to it even our impoverished children still have the the libraries this whole time I've been getting um herps from um the library about online stuff that people can do and you know I, I've, I've seen uh countries well I've seen first world countries and I've seen third world countries. And uh, I think Belize was probably one of the worst things I'd ever seen uh, flying into the main airport there. Uh, the, there were tires burning uh, mm. as you flew in. Like, and then I mm -hmm. got into a taxi cab and uh, they were at the corner with AK-47s. And I was like, mm. where the hell am I? And, Where are you? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, you know, my mother had lit, moved, uh, my mother and stepfather had moved uh, to an island outside of Belize to retire. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, they let crocodiles roam the, the streets. Like, they, mm -hmm. there's nothing. To, and I'm like, people walking around with them on their shoulder. I'm like, have you ever heard of a dog or a cat? And then there's no. dogs and cats running around. I'm like, oh. and they're, it's it's probably their dinner. <laughs> and it's probably not a pet. Like, it's probably not a pet. And, and dinner. <laughs> so I decided that I was going to uh, not pay the fifty dollars. I was going to pay the twenty five to go to the island. So you okay. can have the fifty dollar airplane, uh, 
you know, or you could mm. pay 25 and get on a power drug style boat with okay. like 50 Belizeans who are going over to the island for the day. And um, so I had two children in, in my lap um, mm -hmm. that weren't mine. Uh, they're okay. just random kids. Uh, mm -hmm. And 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 when I mean we we hauled ass, we literally hauled ass. <laughs> there wasn't, I thought I was gonna. I thought I was going back in time. That's how fast we were going. And uh, I I can't swim, so we're going over waves like it's coming out of style. And I was mm. like. I think I should have spent the extra 25. Um, I think so. <laughs> because they're not smart things to do. You just, you know, nobody not had a clicker. Smart. There was no clicker. There was no like 49, 50, wait for the next boat. No. It's shove everybody on there like a New York City subway. Yes. And yes. I was like, okay, maybe we, I should be grateful to be here. Um, so uh, I, uh, I, we've got 10 minutes left. Let's go ahead okay. and promo everything that you got going on. Websites. Remember, these are saved, so people are going to watch these on the rerun and be able to hit you up. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, MissMargaretPBean.com is my webpage. On the Amazon.com, the author page. Once again, Margaret P. Bean. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, far as what I have coming down the pike, um, pushing the publishing company, trying to pick up new clients. So if you want to write that book, definitely hit me up um, on Facebook, um, DM me. Um, once again, I just came out with the new book, which is uh, Madison St. Clair's Get On Up, Let Loose and Dance. And that book is um, just three simple steps on how to relax, release and rejuvenate. And I started it before the pandemic and life for people were just so busy. And I felt these three steps would help people to bring it down and relax. And even now with the pandemic, we have a lot of anxiety and stuff. So it still will be helpful. Um, so trying to push that. Um, my daughter, Danielle, she's doing um, a body scrub and she actually goes live with her online store on Monday. So Danielle Bean, Exfoliation Bean, I think it is on Instagram. So please follow her, support her. The Los Angeles Society, that is my charity of, of choice this year. So for my birthday, please go on Facebook and donate five dollars at least to the Los Angeles to the children who are homeless um, just do something worthwhile this year even though we have a lot going on be able to give back to society one way or the other if it's just taking somebody a bag of groceries or something to just kind of give back I think once we begin to look out for each other as a nation we'll be in a much better place um, so I had a list of people so I'll do six and one entertainment definitely check them out they're awesome people uh, Los Angeles Society oh Kendra she just did her bougie books um, so definitely check out Kendra's Bougie Bookstore. Um, I was so proud to talk to her about that yesterday. And, um, you know, I'm just excited about all the things that are coming down the pike. You know, um, my daughter's doing her business, the Choice Charity, um, you know, um, DC Bundles, uh, uh, paparazzi jewelry. I uh, just got off the phone with her and placed the order, and she's actually sending me a birthday present, so I'm excited about that. DC Bundles and um, the cast of Sister Code, they are amazing, um, phenomenal people that have a passion to act and sing, dance, and bring their best to the stage. I love working with cast that have a great passion to bring things to the stage. But I'm excited about all the things that are happening in the midst of a pandemic. God is still giving birth in a barren season. And so I'm excited. I'm just excited. Yeah. Awesome. Um, for your daughter, uh, when is her, uh, it's going live Monday? Yep, yep. Her so, name is Danielle um, Bean, Exfoliation Bean. It's a body scrub that she's um created from natural products. I'm so proud of her. I'm um, giving her her shout out. Go Danielle. Yay. So have Danielle <laughs> um get a hold of Kendra and okay. we, will, we will power promote that this weekend for you. Okay. All right, cool. No Thanks. Charge. I got to Thank you. Thank no you so much. She's, she's 22 years old yep. and she's stepping out doing her thing. And so we can use that power promotion. I appreciate that no so problem. much. We'll Thank that you. Today and we'll okay. My IG and we'll blast it. Uh, Thank we'll, you. We'll tag people that are in other parts of the country. Uh, mm. I know Janae Marie. Uh, she has her own clothing store out there in L.A. Uh, Tarina Carruth, uh, just off the top of my head. Uh, I know Bray Shade will be down out of Flint, Michigan. So we'll, mm -hmm, we'll tag a whole mm -hmm. bunch of writers and uh, have them promo as well. We'll just 
Thank you. Out. I appreciate that so much. That's yeah, no an problem. awesome thing. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I, I'm all about supporting black owned business and uh, any kind of inter entrepreneurial business. It doesn't really. Yeah, matter, she, she, she's going to be the Jane of all trades. She has a really great um, IT skill. She created an app to locate abandoned homes. And then oh. she went into um, uh, catering over the holiday season. She needed to make some quick money. She can cook really well. And then she um, now is doing this. So I'm excited and I'm happy for her. Yep, yep, yep. So, Excellent. oh, and I just want to give a shout out to my girl Tasha and Stephanie. They have the um, ISO tea and they actually have these new little onesie things. They are amazing. I ordered one and it's sexy and it's, it's, wonderful so they're on instagram as well um so it, just giving them a shout out a onesie for a a, a, a woman it's a romper honey <laughs> yes it's for a woman oh it's it's a it's a ooh we okay yes there it is go. it's a romper for adult women and then grown girls atlanta i'm going to shout them out grown girls new york i'm going to shout them out and then there's a young grown girls young grown girls has an online boutique and they're selling swimwear and um exclusive sandal items last week they had these cute pineapple sandals and they didn't have my size yolanda but we won't talk about that <laughs> yeah, but we're gonna give, we we, we want to give them a shout out because them young grown girls are doing their thing too and so um, I'm excited that grown girls adults have adopted grown girls and they're helping them with their business dreams and ideas too yep so um, I'm excited so I'm gonna put all y'all in touch with Lizzie from Gemma magazine out in LA okay um, she's big into the um, to the fashion side of the house um, okay yep follow Gemma uh, magazine just google that or put that in the Instagram uh, she does IG lives uh, and okay loves promoting fashion um, healthcare products, uh, women's products, everything you can think of. Okay, um, spell spell her name. G E M M A magazine. Yep, Gemma. It's Lizzie. Her real name is Lizzie. Um, okay. Gemma magazine is the IG. Okay, on Instagram. Yeah, and just okay. Saying, you know, I, I was interviewing with DB. Um, uh huh. Got a lot of companies that are uh, women owned and uh, women mm -hmm. power, and Gemma mm -hmm. will take care of you on her end. Okay, great, Chill awesome. Out. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. I appreciate that so much. Yep. So um, anything that I can do for DB, let me know. I'm here, support it. I'm down for it. And so I'm grateful. Thank you so much uh, for allowing me to do my shout outs for my people and help them with their stuff. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're Thanks, Angela. Joy Clemens. Uh, yes. Thank <laughs> you, mother. Um, yeah. <laughs> I call it Mufa. I didn't know that. Mover. That was, yeah, yes. I, I, I think I heard you say that. I was like, he don't know that's mother. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> mother. <laughs> um, yeah. This one was so fun. We're going to do it again in September. Uh, okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll have you on as a, a, a guest again. So get Okay. Well, drunk. thank you so yeah. much. It, I appreciate that. I look forward to being a guest again. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. A lot of things will probably be jumping off between now and September. So yes. I look forward to coming yeah. back, DB. Yeah, right <laughs> uh, Kendra, she'll schedule you in for uh, September. Uh, and if you know anybody that really needs a really good quality social media manager, I highly recommend her. Uh, if you can afford it, <laughs> if you can afford it. Well, know. I have to, I have to check her rates and see, well, but Anybody. you know, it, she does great, phenomenal work. Um, a guy named Archie Snowden, he is TV news in New York and um, he follows me and I follow him and he saw the promotion that she did and he was like, nice, very, very nice, you know, so she's getting noticed. And so I'm going to keep promoting both of you guys um, so that people can do great things together. Um, I'm grateful it. for this connection, but um, good luck with your move and get some rest. And so, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it's you because I probably would have fallen asleep with somebody else's ass. I'd have been like, I'd have been like, just... <laughs> no, you know no, no, we got we we. I'm always gonna make it fun and keep it live. All yeah, right, sure. all right, yeah. So well, I appreciate we're, it. We're gonna close out, but for one final time, Margaret P. Bean, where are you located? Are you on the what Chronicles? Ooh we, ooh we. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So I will send you this live as soon as we end, and um, I really appreciate you coming on. You're great. Oh, thank you, DB. I appreciate being on. Awesome. I'll talk All to right. you soon, okay? Thanks. Take no care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Okay, and that was Margaret P. Bean. And uh, we are ending the DB uh, break. Ooh, we chronicles and uh like i said this is a free platform for any writers readers creatives especially persons of color um this is pretty much a platform for anybody that would like to come on the show so um please uh hit us up in dm or in my link tree bio uh you can fill out the uh you can fill out your form to get on the show and uh we'll book through august right now but uh and we're only doing it about two days a week uh coming up uh just too much to balance, right? And uh, so if you're interested, if you want to pick up any of my work, my name is D.B. Bray. I'm on Amazon. I've written Blood and Whiskey, Blood and Whiskey 2, Firelands, and the new to be released uh, young adult novel, The Last of, the Last Tribe, uh, which is a uh, adventure story for young adults to interest them in the Constitution and what the Constitution is about. Um, I'll leave it at that. So uh, anyway, thank you for tuning in. And this is D.B. Bray from the Oh Wait.